please like and subscribe and select the notification and be notified notified on the next video so a company called cloud stripe and what are they they are a cybersecurity group like many others they provide service to customers and what they do they prevent um, cyber um, intrusion from adversary to malware to ransomware these companies um, function as a security operational center as a service it's kind of a software as a service or some sort of platform but mostly like a software as, as a service what that type of business does they they're in the business of protecting their customers from adversary attack and and the reason why because some of these companies uh, use their service for cost savings for protection of their own system and cost saving because it is very expensive to set up a physical um, cybersecurity operational office because uh, it is very tough or let me just rephrase it a security operational center set up a security operational center is very expensive and it requires 24 7 operation that means you got to have a team to monitor the network traffic you got to have a team to be proactive on finding adversary attack to protect your system from um from hacking so this company provided that service to a lot of customers because they they don't have time or they don't have the money or they don't want to spend the money to set up their own security operational center because it's very prohibitive and very expensive and this is the, the mitigation they do even though some these companies have their own cyber security group but they don't have a uh, operational center like a knock on 24 hours a day seven days a week to monitor every um intrusion detection because it's a very expensive business so they, um they provided they um got a lot of customers but they're not the only one there are many others are advertising their service to the same type of business because it's a growing business it's a popular business because com some of these companies use them as a cost savings and also hopefully that that system will be protected from um, from adversary attack and and um all and what so once they find a um when they find a vulnerability or adversary try to penetrate their system they had to do a development team they have to develop the the update update patch they had to test the patch they had to test it for various um uh, for intrusion and detection input validation like they had to uh, they try to see if they handle a hack of uh, intrusion detection and they had to handle if it could do a brute force or any type of um, attack and they have teams of individual of engineers had to do these testings and they once they they feel the test is complete from the engineers and to the developers they had to present that update to their uh, management for approval and deployment once this that has been approved and deployed it go out to, to their customer systems firewall as a mitigation to protect it because the software is act like an antivirus or a malware protection as a host protection system to prevent it from system to be penetrated so that's the name of the business what happened their last update didn't do as well as they expected it caused a system crash once that system is crashed i mean and once they notify you know once they notice that the system crash went by a customer calling them hey our system is down the last update did this or they like it was like a panic mode well who knows how it happened but you know like the company CloudStrike may have contacted microsoft for extra support to find out what caused the problem what's update they have and what interferes have the, what interference of the update it did to windows so once they found it and once they discover it and find out there is a workaround to it and that's what they kind of told once they dis actually once they discovered this vulnerability once they discovered this faulty and how to recover the, the windows from their customers they sent out the message a bulletin message to the customers by a security portal because the information may not be available to the um to the public but it probably only available to their customers to to the customers on it group 
to take the information, log into the Windows in safe mode. If it's BitLocker, they had to suspend BitLocker on that machine, get access to the machine in safe mode, go to the Windows directory or system file and deleted that file. And once they delete it and reboot or shut down and power back up, the system is restored. Okay. But sometimes that the customers had may have to do a performance check to make sure the system is stable for that to be go back to production service. So now what they did, they have to do a lesson learn report. They have a, when by that, they had reviewed the process that what happened, how the process started, when did they do the testing, what step did they did and what step that, that need to be changed prior to that. They had to learn that what is, has happened because you got to learn from these mistakes and mistakes always happen. It is not a good thing because you're dealing with customers that are dealing with million dollar transaction every moment. And, it, and you cannot afford to have a system that caused that traffic to come to a grinding halt that is totally in most companies and most people say this no that's not good because you interrupt service interrupt everything so from that point on <clears throat> they from that point on they have a um they had to do a lesson learn find out what the process is how to mitigate it and when the next time they do an update patch they know they know what to do from this little debacle incident some companies may decide to change um their services it depends on the contract because because um some of these uh, companies have contract with CloudStrike and you just can't break up the contract they probably going to allow the contract to elapse and then they're going to search for another um vendor to do the same thing as a security operational center as a service because there are a lot a lot of them out there besides cloud CloudStrike that's going to um, they actually open up other avenues for that yes the ceo of the company went out to the media i know that ceos had a lot of communication with their customers they're working and told them they're working on the issue they're going to find a solution to it and once they find a the solution they told their customers that there's a remediation to recover their systems and to get back to their to get back to operational service it is what it is but like I said, this type of business is not easy. A lot of companies are looking for these, these type of business. And and um, it is what it is. And also, and when these companies, when these um, cybersecurity firms, when they do the testing, it depends what type of um, test environment they're using because there's three versions of Windows. There's a home version, there's a professional, and there's an enterprise. And sometimes these companies might test it on the professional. And sometimes they might test it on the enterprise if they set up a, a virtual environment. Uh, so basically is the way they test it and they must have test it on their system. But if they test it on the customer system, we don't know how the customer system is set up because the customer uh, could set up their system totally different. When they do the test environment, they test it on their own systems. It could be a professional version of Windows. It could be a uh, enterprise version of Windows. And once they feel that that is ready to be deployed, some customer system may be set up by policy driven or could be locked down as certain features that prevent hackers from penetrating to the system from their own internal security group that protect their system from outside attack. Because like they're already CloudStrike act like the border and there there is an internal because they still have a security team, but they're not as 24 seven like cloud uh, cloud strike is because um these like i said like um, i'm gonna say it like this some of these companies have their own security firms that had their own security div division and they set up the machine to be hardened to prevent it internally from being hacked but the cloud strike is their provider as their front border protect their system from outside attack and then when that def and and Prevent, I mean, actually, I mean, I mean, because like when, when, I mean, like when they, de when they deploy their software, they deploy it on, from a, a their own test environment and they say everything works. But when they deliver to the customer, it's probably totally different. Why? Their, their customer might have their own security team hardened their system 
to prevent from um, intrusion detection or pre prevent it from hacker attack. And where that deployment enter to their system, it may cause conflict in windows because there's some certain windows are being blocked, turned off, or be hardened because some updates because of the way the system is structured in that organization. Um, like I said before, when they deploy their, um, their update patch, it may be working fine from their test environment, but when we receive to the customers, it depends on the customer how they way they harden the system because they set up the way to try to prevent it from getting hacked from the first place. They don't have it like open everything like they like a default Windows is. They have a hardened down to block certain ports, certain functionalities or anything to make the Windows work in a secure fashion. And wherever the update did, it interferes wherever the um, the corruption is, or wherever the actually when that deployment update installed on the system, it caused some interference how the machine is functioning and it caused it a crash. That's it. And then they had to get the uh, information, had to restore it back. So you got to look at it this way: that company act like the the border, and that border protected from any type of intrusion detection. And but there is internal that does that same thing but it is they don't have a 24 7 operation they probably have a nine to five monday to friday maybe sometimes weekends and may have a team that work on certain hours because like for the airline they might have a, uh, their own security uh, division they may be running 24 7 or they have different shift a different region in the world to run the, the operation so you got to look at it this way it was a mistake. It was an accidental mistake. And I know the political fallout was bad, but at the bottom line is there are a security firm. There is a cyber security firm. There are, there are not the only ones. There are many others out there do the same type of business, try to provide service to customers. And since that incident happened, it gave the opportunity to their competitors to steal the service from their customers because sometimes these customers are going to say hey we want to go to another um uh, another cyber security firm and hopefully they will do a better job than CloudStrike and that's that's their business that's their decision but also it depends on their contract when if they're in the middle of a contract or they have a a, a clause in their contract if they could like leave but at, but the bottom line is once the contract expired then that company has the opportunity to search for another vendor or renew CloudStrike um, services for another contract. Hey, that's how business run and that's how it is. Anyway, this is my statement about the uh, cybersecurity incident, even though it's been a mistake, even though some people think it's just, is um, the, the whole incident, it was unacceptable. Hey, they had to do a lesson learned report. We can't get political about it. And some of these engineers, I know they feel bad. They must have felt shocking and, and they disbelieve what has happened. And I know they did everything they could to get the customer back online. And they had to learn from that. And believe it or not, those guys will find another job. And because some of them will be on it. It's like if they try to let go of someone, yeah, that's a talent loss because of some debacle. But that talent learned from that mistake and how they correct it and they find another job to do the same thing and they take the job and they get more money that's it because um it's a revol this type of business is a revolving door because you get talent get certified and everything get certified work there for at least two to three years and then they move on it's a it's a revolving door and then sometimes these companies hard to keep talent because sometimes these talents they come and go because um the, the way the business is this is a tough business it's hard to work 12 hour shift um and have an operational system a hop operational organization to run 24 7. that's all i to say anyway i see you next time